What's up, world? Welcome back to Charge the Game Podcast. I come to you tonight very, very worn mentally. Uh, it's been a very long, long season. Uh, and I got to come to you guys, man, because I make these videos when my Eagles are doing their thing. And uh, right now we are looking like complete ass. Bird poo poo. Bird crow. Pigeon crow. Eagle crow. Because we ain't flying high like no eagle. That's for sure, man. Man, last night was devastating. Uh, just when I got, just when I thought I got the final laugh against Dak Prescott and those Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I just knew that my team would be able to pull it off, but I also had my my doubts. But I have to come to you guys as a man and get on my own team because, hey, man, we just suck this year. We suck this year, and I'm going to get into everything that I believe is going on. But first off, kudos to those Seattle Seahawks, man. I knew we would lose, man. I knew we would lose. I had a feeling we would win, but I knew we would lose. I had a feeling of winning, but... A knowing of losing and what I know came true we lost we just straight freaking lost fell on our face there's nothing that we can say it's just no it's just nothing with this team man so many games that we really should have a terrible record right now literally we should have a terrible record we escaped by so many games man and I hate to say it but Though the, though the uh, Dallas Cowboys, they will not make it far in the playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, and they damn sure won't make the Super Bowl. But they are a better team right now than the Eagles. And what I mean by that is the Eagles may have better talent. It's a little old to me. But I think that I believe that the Cowboys have better cohesiveness going for them right now they have great cohesive team chemistry they are all playing together they lose together they win together straight up it's no just barely making it it's no all over the place it's no up and down we haven't played a straight solid game all season at all so i gotta give it to the dallas cowboys they are playing a lot more better than us and i want to talk about the philadelphia eagles and everything leading up to this point as you guys know, making it back to the Super Bowl, that's something that is <sighs> tremendously hard to do. It's just hard to repeat, man. Uh, do I think we can come out of the NFC East? I do not know. I have no faith in this team. They have heartedly played, right? And I'm going to get into that as well. But I have no hopes of us making it to the Super Bowl. And honestly, this is just my opinion. I don't even want to make it through the playoffs. I've seen enough. I've seen enough every year is keeping the main thing the main thing Jalen Hurts said right which pisses me off because sometimes I feel like Jalen Hurts goes to the podium just to be cool because it's his brand and it honestly keeps the media from asking him things that he just doesn't feel like asking but you guys saw the sound bite last night and if you didn't I'll play it right now I've been talking about execution all year um been on the same page everyone been on the same page and we didn't execute um I don't think we're we're all we're um, committed enough. You know, you know, just just gotta turn it around. You know, you know, it's a challenge that we have to embrace. And just continue to see it through. What do you mean by that? Not being committed enough. Commitment. I don't know know that I had a dictionary on me now. Um, excuse me. I don't. Exactly. You don't know what the hell you are talking about, Jalen Hurts. You are just going to the podium to give word soup. And that reporter fired back at your ass and ask you, what do you mean? And you literally are stumbling. You have nothing to say. Maybe you said something too fast and you weren't thinking. Obviously, you are under a lot of medicine right now, possibly because of the flu or cold, whatever you had. But that does not excuse your play. Jalen Hurts is not looking at all of his options he isn't going through his reads thoroughly and Jalen Hurts man is regressing all these turnovers but let me tell you guys something it's something deeper man once you are an underdog right think about it Jalen Hurts was an underdog at Alabama right had to prove himself at Oklahoma had to then go second round in the draft had to prove himself with the Eagles earned the starting role you're always going 
to give us your best shot when you're trying to make it. Jalen Hurts has made it. He's got a comfortable $50 million a year type of deal. And now he has all these endorsements coming his way. He signed with Jordan. He's with Hulu. Uh, all kind of deals going on in your life changes. You are naturally distracted because of your new busy schedule. You are a celebrity. You're a ladies man. You're on GQ. You got to shoot all these commercials. You got to shoot these videos. And honestly, man, I think that that just takes away from your quarterbacking. That's why you see these quarterbacks in small markets less distracted. And honestly, you know, it's very few quarterbacks who get paid and remain dedicated to the game. I'm not saying Jalen Hurts is dead, but I do know for a fact that, hey, his life has changed drastically. He went from being a pretty much nobody in the NFL to earning a reputation in the league, the tush push, squatting 600 pounds. Uh, he's resilient. He's very quiet. He has a killer uh, mentality. He has a, a blank RBF resting you-know-what face. And uh, I just think that right now, in the midst of all this going on, you get your offensive coordinator snatched from you. You get your defensive coordinator snatched from you. And this team isn't responding to these new coordinators. Okay. We saw where uh, someone, some of the Philadelphia Eagles football players leaked to the media that their play calling is bland and predictable. Yes, it is. They started off last night with a lot of motioning and, you know, making things, you know, look like it was going to be a slight bit of confusion but then they get away from the run game they keep doing these big shots down the field Jalen Hurst is literally killing himself because I think that he's scared of AJ Brown yes AJ Brown looks like Batman he's a black buff thick strong ass dude and he always gets on Jalen Hurst ass and I don't think that Jalen Hurst um wants any confrontation so he's forcing the ball down the field I've been saying this. I saw the same thing with T.O. and Donovan McNabb. To, to, to this day, that's a huge reason they do not like each other, right? And I see that with Jalen Hurts, man. Like, is this your team or the wide receiver team? Because I can guarantee you this. You will be here longer than the wide receiver. But I can also guarantee you this. Our GM and owner, right, Howie, Howie and uh, the big guy, they will get rid of a coach and a quarterback. So don't get too comfortable, Jalen Hurts. We don't play that shit, okay? Appreciate the Super Bowl run you took us to. Carson Wentz did the same thing, but at least we got the W. We didn't get the W with you. So if you start slacking on us, the Philly fans will turn on you, man. You know we are very obnoxious, okay? So let's get into, uh, you know, the defensive coordinator getting fired, and now we got the guy – uh, from the Patriots. I forget his name right now, but we have him calling plays and the defense looked a little bit better, but man, Slay, the best thing Slay could did, could have done was wait to the end of the season, basically like he did and go get surgery on his knee, right? Because I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm ready to move off Slay and Bradbury. Sometimes Blakenship. Blakenship is always getting burnt. Job is always getting burnt. Um, uh, and we just look old and tired on defense. We look disengaged. And I blame Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni is a player's coach. But you have to draw a line between being a player's coach and being a tough ass. And I don't see Nick Sirianni on a daily basis. But he does not give off tough guy to me. Or a guy who is going to pretty much lay the law and have high strict standards. Doesn't mean that he doesn't have high standards, high strict standards, meaning that this guy makes you nervous when he calls you in the office. He will cut you without thinking about it. Somewhat a sprinkle of Bill Belichick because these players are grown with multi-millions of dollars. You have to have an ego that makes them respect you, play for you, and are in fear of you that you will bench them or move off of them. And I don't see that with Nick Sirianni. And these players aren't responding. They don't take you serious. Yeah, it's cool to be smart and say a little funny stuff to the media and talk trash to the opposing teams, man. But you are not a player. You are a coach. You are there to set the standard. And right now, man, these Eagles look pitiful. They look pathetic. The Cowboys are basically giving them the NFC East, and they still won't take it. Just give it to the Cowboys, honestly. I want Detroit to come out of the NFC personally and i want lamar jackson to win it all that's right you heard it here first on charge the game 
But yeah, man, the my Philadelphia Eagles definitely have a lot of things going on, and I would not be surprised if the DeVito kid uh, whoops our ass, and I damn sure wouldn't be surprised if Kyler Murray and, and company, you know, wipe the turf with us because we don't have what it takes, and we do not deserve to be mentioned in the same conversation as the Cowboys, 49ers, or the Detroit Lions right now. That's my opinion. So if you guys are new to the channel and you like the content, please chime in on this topic. If you're a Philly fan, chime in and let me know exactly what you think is going on with this S. We have lost control and it is May Day. Like always, thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. Let me know how you charge the game. Peace.